Oh, Chikapa. Eh, you're looking regal. Hard to believe it's been a whole year. It feels like I only just started yesterday. Yeah, it's also like I've been doing this forever. You are looking somewhat worse for wear, my lord. Do I? Who am I kidding? You're right. On the other hand, you don't look like you've even lost an hour of sleep this entire year. Goes to show an experience I really am. Well, it is true that I have been in this position for many years. I also do not bear nearly as much responsibility as you. I merely stand in the background and offer you small pieces of advice. All the while, you face the crowds directly, negotiate with counts, make dozens of difficult decisions. If there is one thing I have learned in all my years, it is that I could never begin to imagine the weight a ruler must carry. Never mind one who was never raised to take the throne and thrust themselves into the labyrinth of politics and high society. It would be a greater surprise if the trials had not taken their toll. That reminds me. Panya was lord for a full decade before we took him out, wasn't he? And as I recall, he wasn't as much of a despot early on. Just one year has taken this much out of me. How long before I'm no longer to act like a reasonable human being? No. Don't think like this, Jacopo. Actually, forget it. What matters is that we seem to be doing a good job minimizing discontents. Indeed, you have successfully made it through the first year. The city is decidedly more presentable than it was when you took the throne. There are precious few who could replicate your accomplishments in such a short time, my lord. You would do well to take pride in your work. Pushing to do everything so quickly has taken its toll. People are worn thin. Slaves are dying by the droves. I still have a ways to go before there's anything I can be proud of. Slaves are the tools of progress, my lord. Tools do not last forever and must be replaced regularly. And you can't build a house with your bare hands. I get it. You learn quick. Not even a year ago. I'd run up in arms about the number of slaves dying. But now they're just numbers to me. Apparently my worldview has changed quite a bit. It is about time we started considering our next step. Meaning? Meaning your efforts thus far have merely been toward repairing the damage caused by your predecessor. You make it sound like all this has just been a warm-up. My apologies. I did not mean to discount your great efforts, my lord. I was simply speaking of the grander scheme. Yeah, I got that. I want to settle on a direction for how to grow the city, right? Indeed. The status quo is vastly inadequate for bringing prosperity to this land. And there is no saying when the surrounding territories may cease being so friendly. And set their eyes upon conquering us. But of course, you cannot keep your eyes trained outward in fear of attack and allow the land to devour itself from the inside either. So what you're saying is, it's a balancing act. Precisely. So, what kind of advancements do I want to pursue? There's something that's been on my mind. The land is ill-suited to growing crops. When I lived down in the slums, I had no perspective and figured that we produced here 
What we produced here was no different than anywhere else. But now I know better. The grapes used for our wine are miserable compared to what I have been served elsewhere, as is nearly everything else we grow. I can only assume the land itself is to blame. Oh, oh, oh. The wine from the south is indeed exceptional. You quite nearly gave me a heart attack when you leapt from your chair in the middle of a meeting, shouting, this is nothing like the one from home. Enough. That never happens. It was my first time tasting anything like, like it, alright? Anyone would have had the same reaction. Oh, 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 oh. You have grown much, but nevertheless, you are still quite green. God, I really need to watch myself around this man. In any case, it would be ideal if we could begin producing higher quality grapes. Not necessarily to compete with the South, but enough to be serviceable. Efforts to improve our farmland are underway, although it could take some time before we see the progress. Have you any propositions, my lord? Actually, I was thinking it might be best to cut back on agriculture. Do elaborate. What if we were to build the city up into a trade hub of sorts? Meaning, you wish to open our gates to our neighbors. Exactly. One thing the city has going for it is its wealth of artisans. But for years we've only ever exported our goods. I want to bring people here to purchase. Reduce taxes for merchants and give them special privileges. Set tariffs and border taxes lower than they are in the capital. And business will naturally find its way here. This land may be less than optimal for farming, but it's more than adequate for trade. When a convenient location to serve as a hub for the surrounding realms. Rather than close our borders and wall ourselves off entirely, Opening up and making ourselves of value to our neighbors is far more likely to dissuade potential invasion. We're all pieces on one another's boards, isn't that right? Who says that can't apply to the entire city? The best way to expand without stepping on anyone's toes is to do so in a way that benefits them as well as us. What do you think? A rather aggressive strategy you propose, my lord. If I may be so bold, there will be many obstacles to this plan's success. You'll need to arrange meetings with the head of each realm you intend to invite, the order and timing of which will be crucial to success. Furthermore, the influx of outsiders will be a source of much tension among your people. So you think I'm aiming too high? You are indeed aiming exceedingly high. Your obstacles will be numerous and precipitous. Nonetheless, obstacles can be overcome. Your exhaustion is nothing compared to the weariness that awaits you down this path. Do be well aware of this, my lord. You're damn right I am. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go all in. The lord's manor sat atop a tall hill. Gazing out, the city stretched before me. Countless columns of smoke rising from the buildings. The people scurrying about like so many ants. From up here, I had the perfect view of the bustle of the city. But I was too far away to feel the life breathing through it. To think I used to be one of those tiny little specks. Thousands of people lived there. They had families, jobs, friends, hobbies. But as much as I was cognizant of the fact, I no longer grasped it on anything more than a conceptual level. It was incredible just how much my view of the world had changed in merely a year's time. I'm willing to go out in the world, I said. 
I thought that clawing my way to the top of the ladder would let me see it. Would let me experience it. That with power, I could have the whole world at my fingertips. But reality wasn't so simple. This sure isn't what I was looking for. Hell, I feel like the chain just gotten tighter around my neck. There's no way to truly grasp the view from this height without climbing up and seeing it for yourself. And that was exactly where I was a year ago. Blind to the reality of life in the upper class echelons. Fantasizing about a world that didn't exist. Unlike the me of the past, I did have the satisfaction of feeling like I was accomplishing big things. But was that really worth cutting myself off from all my friends? Did those achievements really justify a bloody revolution? I suppose I should ask, was this work valuable enough to me to justify it all? Reminiscing about days long gone wasn't going to help anything, and in fact it only served to cause me pain. I couldn't return to that time. This was where my quest for power had brought me, and now I had to live out my days as lord of this land. Telling myself day after day. That it was far better than being a powerless slum rat. God, I've been so busy these past few weeks. My czar. One day I'll show you the world. Do you ever get tired of saying that? You gotta think big. Dream. The world's changing all around us. Life. Just, just fighting to make it by day by day is hardly life at all. I, I don't want to spend the rest of my days confined to this tiny little corner of the world. Well, try not to let your dreams go so big they crush you. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll just have you sing for me if it ever gets to be overwhelming. Why would I be there? Why wouldn't you? It's hard to show you the world if I don't bring you with me. Knowing you, you still won't know where you want to go. So I'll bring you with me. We can find a place for you together. Pretty good deal, huh? I don't need to see the world. All I want is... Don't stop for a second there. It feels like those days were an eternity ago. I don't need to see the world. All I want is... All you want is what? Magana. What were you trying to tell me? Man. It feels like a whole different place here now. Just think. Looks like same old nasty dump it's always been. He's talking about the whole city, adult. <laughs> exactly. Things are on the up and up in the city proper, but we ain't seen a scrap of it down here. Thanks up with that. All the new shops are spilling out past the city border, the highway into town turned into a full blown bazaar. Ooh, oh, sounds nice. Is there anything in that damn head of yours? We're saying how come we're still living like rats if they got enough to spare coin to build all that market space? Hell with all these damn immigrants coming in. The slums are even, an even bigger shithole than before. Yeah, I never thought much of it till now, but you're right. The gang's been a lot busier lately with all the drifters. And Jacopo, uh, Lord Bunnier, ain't showed his mug down here ever even once since he took over. I mean, I get that the bloody lord can't spend all day hanging out with the slums. But he could at least visit. And said he's spending all his time butting up with the rich folks. And we used to be such good friends, too. I wonder if his plan is just not bothering with us at all. I hope not. But that's sure what it looks like. 
He's like he'd at least throw us a bone rather than letting the merchants and upper class take corn bats in his coffers. <laughs> Guess when he became one of them, he became just like them too. Feels like we're in the exact same place we were a year ago. He's no different than old Barnier. God. Oh, it's you. Shall you find anything? Yep. I got the poof you was looking for. But if you'd be so kind as to ne'er give me a job like this again, I'd be hanged thrice over if the nobles found out I was sniffing round in their business. <laughs> oh, quit being such a bitch. You didn't steal nothing or can them. You're fine. A man's secrets can sometimes be worth more in his life. But on to business. Your suspicions were correct. <laughs> well, if you said it was, his pay, take your piss off. Nice doing business. Hey, hold up now. I risked my neck to get this, that for you. And this is all I get in return. Okay, I promise I do a bitch. No, sir. Dennis Shavari. He'll get your fear and do you shortly. These construction, construction costs are really starting to pile up. Can't we put the manor repairs off until we've taken care of more pressing matters? Like using that money to help the poor? The Lord and his residence are the face of his land. If you wish for this city to continue thriving upon the fruits of your relationships with the surrounding realms, you must maintain a minimum level of respectability, my lord. Merchants in particular are merciless judges of appearance. Of this you can be certain. No respectable merchant will do business on equal terms with a city whose lord refuses to take care of his own home. I get that, but still, it's so much money. These are necessary expenses. To acquire the resources required to aid the lower class, we must increase the rate of production. Efforts must begin at the top and gradually work down. You must not be in such a great rush, my lord. The work you are performing is on a much larger, longer scale than perhaps that of which you are accustomed. You have a point. To let the construction continue. I'm definitely coming to see just how crucial a bit of embellishment can be to surviving in high society. Every engagement is like throwing myself into a lion's den. Everyone surrounding me, measuring me up. They question my pedigree. Some with their eyes, some with their mouths. Some even attempt to dig up dirt on me in order to tilt the scales in their favor. Oh yeah, and there was that one time then I was straight up shouted at right to my face. You're no more damn noble than any of those other rats whose nest you crawled out of, if I recall. Not that he was wrong. I took the throne by force. It's only natural that people are going to have the suspicion that I came from the slums is just the icing on the cake. I'm damn lucky if condense condescension is the worst treatment I get on a first encounter. Then there are the distant relatives, Bonnier yeah, that slip through the cracks. Southering back up to assert their rights to the land. There are a lot more people out there out to get me than I first anticipated. Do remain strong, my lord. <laughs> I will always be strong. If I so much as let these wolves smell weakness, they'll pounce all over me. Like hell I'm gonna let that happen. 
won't have time to work on helping the poor if I have to spend my days fending off packs of bloodthirsty nobles. I must always appear strong under any circumstances. I, of all people, should know just how easily a lord can be dethroned. And I'll be next if I lead, leave even the slightest opening. I have to do what it takes to make sure that's not my future. Perhaps you should get some rest, my lord. Excuse me? Are you insane? I have to review the construction budget, so that's... Allow me to handle that. I will get you something to drink. Perhaps a glass of that southern wine you are so fond of. It is quite sweet. Perfect for alleviating built-up fatigue. I'm not fatigued. Come now, please take this request from an overly concerned consul, my lord. Fine, you win. It's hard to believe it's only been a year and a half. I feel like we go way back. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho, we do see each other every day after all. I'm starting to crave some variety, to be honest. <laughs> Never found a good opportunity to ask you this, but... Yes? Do you have any family? Because if you do, you're more than welcome to have them live here. I appreciate your concern, my lord. But they have all passed away. All of them? Indeed. My entire family was eradicated at the previous lord's order. Once and only once, I offered him my humble opinion. So infuriated he was by my insolence that he had my family murdered. I would have much preferred myself killed in their stead. But he was a man who reveled in others' suffering. And you just kept on serving him? That is correct. I acted as his loyal servants, too afraid to speak up again. Acted. Recall what I said when we first met. I was sitting in wait for the perfect opportunity. Now you understand why. Well, damn. And if I may come clean about that time, I had every intention of disposing of the revolution's puppet master. Never once did I trust Ginevra. Her foolish motives were plain as day. As the new lord's mother, she planned to control her planted usurper from the shadows, acting as the effective governor of the land. Having no family left myself, the city and its people are like my children. So I refuse to stand by and allow her to turn them into tools to satisfy her own avarice. The land would hardly survive a tyrant swooping in to replace a tyrant. But she was removed from the board by the former lord before she had a chance to see her aspirations to fruition. Knowing she was no longer a danger, I decided I would wait and see how the successor fared before taking any further action. To determine if you were sufficient to serve as lord of this land. And uh, I guess I passed, huh? Are you not upset, my lord? Nothing to be upset about? You never hid the fact that you acted in your own interests? 
But if a piece had no value to you, you discarded it. And I always knew there was more than what you were telling me. I'll just say, I'm relieved to still be standing here. Oh, oh, oh. If only you knew how close you were to falling on the other side of that line. Am I really that on edge? <laughs> After all the work I've put into this? While you do have a rare aptitude and strength of spirit, you are still much too easily swayed by your emotions. <sighs> Ergo, I shall continue to instruct you until you are able to fully satisfy my expectations. It is rather curious, so oft do we speak, so great our time together. I have come to think of you as my second son. Don't get all mushy on me, old man. We're not friends and we're not family. I'm a pawn on your board and you a pawn on mine. Strictly business. Oh, oh, oh. My apologies. I never said a word. Right. Never happens. Moving right along. You just keep doing what you do best. At your service, my lord. Out of curiosity, do we have any free hands around capable of riding a horse? For what purpose? There's someone I want found. Whoever it may be you wish to find, my lord, I am obligated to remind you of that. You don't even have to finish that, I know. I'm supposed to leave the past in the past. Let us see, then. Your men have their hands rather full at present, though we can perhaps arrange for one of them to be reassigned. Are you sure? It is a small request, but not once in your entire tenure have you requested to use your men for personal matters. I believe we can spare a hand or two on such rare occasion. Much appreciated. Shall I arrange for them to set off immediately? Please. I'm looking for a girl. If she's alive, she'll look around 13 or 14. And she has unusual markings on her face. Markings akin to burn scars. Bonnier once imprisoned her in this manner. He used her as a prop for his banquets, cutting her up from head to toe. My guess is that the patches on her face are a result of Bonnier's abuse. Indeed, I know the girl. I presume she had not survived the slave revolt. I take it you care quite deeply about this girl, my lord. Then allow me to offer my sincerest apologies in his stead. No need to apologize. Will you help me find her? Odalyn? I will oversee the search operation personally, to the best of my ability, my lord. I pray the girl is still alive. As do I. Unlikely as it may be. I'm just chasing after a sliver of a dream that shattered long ago. That said, if you do find her alive, bring her here without telling her it's at the Lord's order. She'll likely assume it's the old Bernier who's after her if you say anything. And if she happens to have found a new home where she's happy, just leave her be. Understood. Time drifted slowly onward. As I'd anticipated, there was no news regarding her whereabouts. But new shops and stalls continued opening in the city, with them coming a steady flow of travelers and passing merchants. And as traffic through the city increased, so too did the number of people seeking an audience with me. I was getting busier by the day. My plans to attract merchants and artisans from the capital had worked, 
and every one of them seemed to have bigger, more ambitious proposition than the last. My days became a cycle of meetings, reviewing propositions, balancing the budget, and deciding whether to proceed or postpone, and amidst all the tumult, my thoughts drifted ever further from the poorest of my people. And that's the last of the day's meetings. There's no ins insight to this. That is a good thing, my lord. It means you have succeeded in drawing traffic to the city. I guess, but still. <sighs> I need to go back and review all these proposals, so... Lord Monier, a moment. I don't have a moment to spare. A townsperson requests an audience with the lord. You have been instructed to deny entry to commoners. I, I tried, but he refused to leave the gates. Hold on, what's this man's name? Sir, he calls himself Gratian. Oh shit. Really? Is it really him? Let him in, by all means. My lord, you mustn't give anyone special treatment. Gratian's not just anyone. We've been down back together. It wouldn't be here if it wasn't important. I should hear what he has to say. N no, my lord, you cannot. Your, your past is... He's a good friend. I'm not sending him away. That's not even on the table. Friend or not, you mustn't give him an audience. You are the lord now, and he a mere peasant. You cannot be certain he will hold himself with proper decorum. I don't appreciate what you're implying about my friend, old man. He's no goddamn brute. I imply nothing, my lord. Keep your console topic to topics you actually know something about. I'm not going to stand by and listen to anyone insult my friends. Not even you. My lord, must I remind you yet again to keep your temper in check? <sighs> That's enough out of you. I'm done. Not another word on the subject. My lord. Hey, guard. Open the gate. Yes, sir. It feels like forever. How have you been doing? Never been better. How about you, kid? Him? Show proper respect to your lord, peasants. You are to refer him as, refer to him as Lord Vanier. Not any false names he may have responded to while in hiding. Seriously? You ain't gonna let him kick back even for a buddy. Enough, Adil Adilin. He can call me by my old name. But my lord... I said I've heard enough from you. Uh, look at you, taking church and parking orders all prop important like. I can call you a man, my lord. Please, you can use my name. I'm just serious, though. I don't believe it ain't even been two years. See, it's look like a whole new man. You think so? I don't feel like I've changed all that much myself. Oh no, just a uh, whistle word. Emanate lordliness now. Guess it don't take long and the nobles didn't turn into one of them. Out of how far down the chain it come from. And look at this room. Look at all these fancy heaven furnishings. No, this old vanity stuff, is it? Nope, with all the meetings I've been having, I needed to make sure I had a room that was nice and presentable. Well, that's one, I suppose. Hey, don't think I'm just throwing around money for the fun of it. If I want uh, any pull in negotiation, I need to look like I have. <laughs> no, I need to explain yourself, kid. I totally get it. Now it is dealing with a bunch of rich folks with sticks up their asses. I... I appreciate it. Anyway, what brings you here today? What, what? Do I need a reason to visit a friend? Can't a guy just want to hang out and cash up? Come on. 
I never said that. I'm just extremely busy at the moment. I don't have much time to spare for anyone. Come on. Don't be such a tight ass. That's exactly why I'm here. Back shade don't go. That's got that sick up there so he punctures your brain. Gotta let loose sometimes. I, I suppose. Thank you for your concern. So she goes flush, just like old days. I haven't left the booze. I wish I could, but I don't have the time. He'll drink with the merchants and rich snobs if not me. That stinks, kid. Where just cut. I see you as pushy as ever. Alright, fine. One drink in the back room. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. My lord. It'll be fine, Dylan. We go back years. There's nothing wrong with a couple friends sharing drinks after hours. If you insist, my lord. But the peasant must leave his blade behind. I will not, under any circumstances, allow you to be alone with an armed slum dweller. Yeesh, everyone here is loose enough, huh? Seriously, think I'm gonna pour a sword on an old pal? Humor me. Whatever, fine. You win, old timer. Happy now? Yes. Sorry about that, Gretchen. But Dylan's always on edge. It's nothing personal. <laughs> That's cool. Can't say for him. Let's go get trashed. Probably a little something from the pub we used to haunt. But she usually drink a uh, way better shit than this now, but hey, the friggin' lord. But it'll be like old times, you know. This reminds me of the time we had that drinking contest. Well, we got another round. I'll have to refrain. But Dylan would murder me if I did that. Sounds like the geezers got you by the balls, huh? Yeah, found a lad up here in the forest house. It can be rather suffocating, yeah. Well, you can at least let loose today. It's old times, kid. It's old times. Now this is a sight I never dreamed of. The two of us, here in the Lord's Manor, drinking together. We were both slaves when we met for God's sake. <laughs> no, a joke. You never know what life brings you. Been almost five years since then. You aren't even twelve yet. I expect we've both grown uh, quite a bit since those days. Or are you still running around like a wild boar even now? I <laughs> say, I don't think I'm as bad as it used to be. But getting into shit kind of comes with territory now. And the slums are still the same as ever. I see. So how's everyone doing down there? We're scraping by as usual. The rest of the gang? Uh, and Maria? The guys are still lacing around at the fire all day. Maria's already built the brothel and she's getting by as best she can. Half is not in the same place and it's smaller than an old one. Not for her shake, she's doing alright for herself. I'm glad to hear it. It's kind of good. Who dare her totally out of thing, yeah. Where on earth did that come from? I believe I've already told you. No, we did not. Just seems like she is about ten times more worried about you than everyone else. That's been something. That makes sense otherwise. Maybe she just had a thing for you and you can have sauce. Poor girl. There's no romantic feelings on either side. We were friends. Simple as that. Nothing more, nothing less. Have you seen those monkeys? What does that have to do with anything? It just doesn't make sense to me. How can a guy hold be friends with a chick? It just means we value certain things in life differently. Enough. 
I like to do that sometimes, because I'm fairly noble like that. Hey, I didn't mean that as a chaff. It has nothing to do with being noble. Maria's really special. We've known each other most of our lives, and we survived hell together. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that before, didn't you? That you two have known each other longer than anyone else. What was it like back then for the two of you? Before I met her, Maria was raised in an orphanage. She said she ran off because she and the director didn't get along. <laughs> Can't say I'm surprised. How about you? I... Hard to remember anything from before I came to this city. Just bits and pieces of what my mother told me. Being guarded by a bunch of men, being kidnapped by bandits. You mean that tough one? Very shame we had to lose her so soon after uniting her. Huh? Indeed it is. <laughs> Don't you think it's about time we cut the shit? Excuse me? I'm not a bunny, eh? You didn't inherit the throne. You're just a damn fraud. Ain't that right, Chicapo? What are you talking? First, I to kick in, looks like. God, you got any idea how it was to dodge all yes through that entire con conversation? What? Almost out of nowhere, my heart rate skyrocketed and my legs started trembling. I had to lean against the wall to support myself. The whole world started swirling. I could just barely make out my old friend glaring at me through the fog. Heck that. Feels like your heart's about to burst out. Don't you worry, kid. You won't be feeling nothing soon. You... You, you poisoned the drinks? Why would you? Why? Seriously, need to spell it out for you. Huh. <laughs> Stuffing your head with fucking rainbows up here. You know what the Kali down the slums? Chicago the betrayer. Oh, I did not betray. Take one guy and look at the city and tell me that again. I'd have better treating anyone with a card and some trinkets to sell and give them royalty. Some still the same restlessness you left in. No, we're even worse off now. With your new marketplace, anyone can turn a little bit of money into a big old pile of gold. If you got nothing to begin with, you're just dead in the streets. All you're doing is making the rich here and richer. No, I'm trying. I want to explain how I had everything planned out. I first needed to improve the economy as a whole before I could turn my attention to the last one off. But nothing changing was proof I was protecting them. But the slums had been in danger of being eradicated entirely, and I had stopped it. But I could see it in his eyes, but nothing I said would convince him. As far as he was concerned, I was pure evil. Yeah, the man used to be. Kratian, why? I thought you believed in me. Yeah, right, it did. And went and fares a bunch of lies. Call yourself a rightful heir, call yourself a bunny heir. But I did my digging. You don't got a look in the world about any. All I ever wanted was to hide in park at your selfish bastard. No, I never had any intention of helping us. Please, hear me out, Guardian. Or I'll just pounce you. Old time revolutions party game. I'm begging you! How does feel knowing your throne this is on the backs of all those people you betrayed? Please! You don't have any right to call yourself a goddamn lord. Gratian! <laughs> you have any right to call yourself an effing man. You're just ran in fancy clothes. That should have been me. I would have made an infinitely better lord than you ever were. If only I had that ring, it could have been me. So that's what this is all about? And if I wish everything I once felt for this man, all the friendship, the camaraderie, the sympathy went cold. As much as he tried to dress up this whole farce, that was where his heart truly was. 
He was just sad about not being the one who got to be the Lord. He believed himself superior. He got himself caught up in this stupid fit of jealousy. And now he's trying to kill me over it. That's seriously all this is. Are you listening to a word you're saying? What's just that? You're the one who's not the man he used to be. And you're the one who's being a self-centered bastard. Okay, I'm not the dead man. The guardian I knew would never resort to using poison. He'd have drawn his sword the second he passed through those gates, faced me like a man. But look at you. Even Barnier had more of a spine than you. You dare compare to that sack of shit. Alright, fine. Played your way. He had a knife hidden on him. An instant later, Gratian was brandishing a short blade. He had snuck it under, in under his clothes, I presumed. I was almost amazed at how thoroughly prepared he was. He never had any intention of going in the other way. He hadn't come to talk. He was never going to hear me out. He was here to do one thing and one thing only. And I doubt he had any plans for what would come next. Raw hatred was all that fueled him. He wouldn't take my place after killing me. He wouldn't work himself to the bone to ensure the city kept running. He didn't give a single damn about any of that. You're scum. I won't be taken down by some worthless sub-absorbed rat. Nothing I'd ever tried had been enough to best Gratian in combat. And that was when I was at my peak. Not with the myriad of needles in his poison prickling my every pore, barely able to stand under my own weight. But still, I had no intention of surrendering my life to this cur. I took in a deep breath, clenched my teeth, shouted at my shaking limbs. Move! Move, move, move! Oh, damn you! My fingers, I could feel them again. Before the thought finished passing through my mind, my hand reached for a blade. Grasping the rapier hanging from the wall, I swiftly drew it from its scabbard. It was a decorative blade, not meant for combat. It would pry bounce right off Gratian's muscular chest. But there was one place I could target. Where the hell, you son of a bitch! Knife in hand, he lunged at me. Just moments before death befell me. My vision blurred by the poison grew unbelievably clear. Gratian almost appeared to be moving in slow motion. I wasn't sure my mind had ever been so clear and so sharp in battle before. The dying embers of my fading life burned anew into a blazing inferno. Gah! Unlike my fight with Barnier, this one was over in an instant. Before I had time to breathe or even blink, it was settled. And I had in that same instant, everything that I had built up with this man turned to dust. I had never once defeated him. For as long as I had known him, I was always, always, always number two. And now, for the first, very first time, <laughs> I won. What this? It's me. Here's it. Not me. The blade of the rapier in my hand skewered Gratian's throat. His mouth flapped open and shut like a fish. He glared at me, face twisted in a mixture of hatred and agony, sputtering fragments of contempt, until the life drained from his eyes. My first victory against my old friend also took his life. And it all happened in the blink of an eye, hardly enough time to even register in my mind. <sighs> <sighs> So that's, what, two betrayals by people we had thought to be friends now? Three, uh, people in total that Chikapos now had to kill, that were... <sighs> Things power will do. 
M my lord, M my lord, what was all the commotion? W what happened? <sighs> my lord, please stay with me. Were you poisoned? S someone, is anyone there? Yes, sir. Uh, doctor, as quickly as you can. I hear. Uh, uh, my lord, please, my lord. A doctor will be here shortly. Please, stay with me just a little longer. Uh, uh, my lord. Uh, oh, Dylan. You, you were right. I was stupid. I should have listened. I thought he was my friend, but he wasn't. Not anymore. And because we'd once been friends, that made him my greatest threat.